Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. I'm so excited to be here today. I didn't think I would be able to film, but I did have a couple of hours today to be able to talk to you, so I'm very, very excited. I do hear my chair squeaking though. We can't have that. There we go, I think. Hi. It is June now, which is absolutely insane. It's June. May went by so quickly. I think I've said that in all of my podcasts, but it's true. I don't even have time. I thought I would have a bunch of summer knits by now, but I don't even have one. So, yeah. But we do have some other stuff to get to. I posted my last video a week ago, I think. In that video, we went through my yarn stash and what I plan to make with everything because I wasn't supposed to buy any more yarn. But I will say, about 42 hours after that, I did buy yarn. Quite a lot of yarn. Listen, we'll get to that later. I'm sorry, but it starts today. The promise starts today, okay? Yeah. Last month I had a lot of whips and I have frogged two of them, which was the novice cardigan and the wait, what is this? Uh what else? The forget me forget me not top by Mr. Bobbin. Those two didn't work out, so we've frogged them. But we do have three finished objects, which is quite cute. One of them is pretty a big step for me. I think you can see it over there. I did talk about it uh, in the last podcast. And we have one whip because <laughs> it's quite a large whip as well. So yeah. And we have acquisitions as well. So let's get into it, shall we? So the first thing that I finished this month is my Ingrid slipover. I did show you guys a swatch in the last video, I think. Yeah. And I talked about how I don't know, I don't remember what I said. I think I was excited to make this, but I was very nervous. But it all worked out because here she is in all its glory. Golf and glory. I don't know how the lighting is and how well you can see it, but I do have a picture of it and maybe I'll do a try on. I'm saying maybe. We'll see. This baby was made during Eurovision time. I was very sick. I've been sick for over a month now. Really, I'm starting to feel better, which is nice. Um, but this was a great project to make. While it did give me frustrations and make me feel worse, it did help with distracting myself from... Yeah. And I knitted on this while watching all the rehearsals and things from Eurovision. So when I look at this, I'm just getting very nostalgic from Eurovision this year. While I was making this, I was writing down notes of what I wanted to share with you guys because I've never made something like this before. I've only made stockinette. I did start knitting this September, I think, or it might have been August or October. I don't remember. Um, so I've only done stockinette things because I believed that I love knitting just plain stockinette in the round. The reason why I thought that was because I thought I couldn't be able to do anything like this. But now when I've done this, I realize that I do not like working stockinette in the round. <laughs> of course we all love it, right? But it, I do not have a lot of patience. That's why it's so strange that I like knitting. Because I have patience for nothing in life. I... nope. Nah. So yeah, I've just grown so tired of just knitting plain stockinette. Not saying that I will never not do it again, because it's obviously, I feel like, the prettiest thing ever just a plain stockinette sweater but it is a bit boring for me now when I've knitted so much of that that's why this was so refreshing so I think you all know what the Ingrid slipover is it's obviously by patina Duh. you I want to go through all the stitches so we have a lot of double moss here and also on the shoulders here and here before the ripping and that was probably my least favorite thing <laughs> with um, the entire project just because it was so repetitive if you haven't worked double moss it's 
one row of knit one pro one rib and then the second row it's a four row repeat you do knit one pro one again and then we have two knits and two pearls on top of each other you do a pearl one knit one so you switch it up and then on the fourth row you do a pearl one knit one again so it it's simple but when it was mixed together with like increases um and things i will get into that more with my whip that i have um it wasn't difficult i will say this is a four out of five this one by patina and as you may know i've hold myself to i only knit patina basically um i've hold myself to these difficulty rankings a lot of the times like i've seen something that i want to make but it's a three out of five so i can't do it and every single time i've gone up a difficulty rate i'm like is this it <laughs> This is why I've been so scared, and this is the same thing. It's not difficult, but it requires attention in a good way. It keeps my mind working. I feel like I've let my mind rest for two years since the start of the pandemic. I've just been flatlining in my head. I haven't studied. I, I don't know. I'm just, this was a good thing for me. It feels like I've worked up some type of neurons i can't speak english sorry something in here that's like working extra hard after this i don't know i feel way smarter it might be <laughs> my ego no obviously not but i i was shocked that this was so easy and now i i feel like i can't i can't do everything you know uh, i obviously can't and uh, this me being able to make this is not does not mean that i will not make mistakes in the future i kind of the first day after I finished this, I kind of thought that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this has not been getting a lot of wear. Um, I am incredibly proud of it. I made it in white because um, I think white... Dramatic. I think white is my favorite knit color to use because I just feel like white looks good on everyone. If you have blue, white, or black hair, blonde hair, I mean, obviously everyone looks good in white i just feel like white is a universal uh, nice color for your clothes so i used one strand of lipstick um, fins lantras and i think um if you've seen my videos before you've seen that yarn on her website it said that it was soft and i hear a lot of people speak about that the yarn is soft um i think those people are rustic knitters they use this scratchy uh, yarn like extremely scratchy and then they're like ooh, soft for me however uh okay so when i first put this on i did work at the yarn store right after this had dried and i wore this black not long sleeve but like a shirt to here um but my neck was bare and I put this on and I was like ooh okay and it started to become very prickly around here but then I forgot about it so I mean I didn't think about that for the rest of the day so just like having it in my lap right now through my skirt I can feel like a little prickly sensation so I will say however wearing this I made a size medium I've started making a size large for teen knit patterns, but somehow I did hit gauge. Um, however, one thing that's changed, this pattern calls for a DK, I think. Um, a DK and a, and a, help, mohair. But I did have to get two strands of mohair because I went up a needle size. And my swatch without, with just two strands looked way too like... Mm, I didn't like the fabric. So this is two strands of mohair and a DK weight. When I wore this, I first started feeling the prickly sensation, but then afterwards, it was just, it was so comfy to wear. Like the oversized fit, like ugh, when I was driving to work, it was just, it's comfortable, but it is warm. Let me tell you, I was sweating uh, when wearing this. Um, yeah. So this will most definitely, I've put away all of my winter knits, 
in a big IKEA bag and I will pick it up for winter again, winter fall time. But I have not put this away yet because I, I am feeling quite proud of it. But I will not wear this. <clears throat> it's just too warm, you know? But I'm very proud of it. If you check my Ravelry, you will see the notes that I put that I thought was helpful. Because I can't remember them in my head right now. But one of them, that is a huge tip. If you're like around my scale of knitting, my difficulty rating, uh... One tip that really helped me was you start up here, right? I have a lot of things I actually want to say about this and my whip, but those things require me to reveal the entire pattern and I it feels wrong. So I've been thinking about how to say things, um, but it's difficult. But I have written some cheeky things on my Ravelry if you want to check it out. But here you start on this side. And luckily, you start with short rows right away. You cast on and you do short rows. I haven't done that before, 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 but right before this one, I made the weekend v neck zip over, and that had the same uh, construction. So I was so happy when I started this, and I was like, oh, thank I, I told you guys in the last podcast that I felt like I learned a lot from it, but I didn't know why, but now I know why. I had a feeling. I didn't have uh, whatever, uh, but I'm very happy that I did it. It made it made me be able to focus on the shards because I've never. Okay, I can only think of shards with an S H when I say that. I don't I don't know if it's my pronunciation, but I never followed a diagram, one of those things, and I was quite nervous, but it made a lot of sense. I have written a note about shards during under my Ravelry page. I'll link specifically to that if you're thinking of casting this or this. Ingrid sweater on. Um, some things may... I've just written a couple of things. Just see if it helps you and go in there. Um, but yeah. Beautiful, ain't it? It's pretty. Um, and I will definitely say that being a... I used a 4.5 needle and then for the ribbing it was 3 millimeter for the neck and 3.5 for the armholes. Picking up stitches was quite strange from being used to have the same type of stitches all the way while working stockinette and just picking up. This had all the different like uh, stuff. Uh, but it, it worked out. So just be mindful if you make this and haven't done a project like this. Just be mindful and I promise you it's not going to be as difficult as you think. Because this is literally just knit one purl one ribbing on the opposite way. These ones are super simple. Super simple. And fun. These are addicting. And then just two by two ribbing with these super smart increases. Do you see that? I was... I Okay, I was thinking about getting into a little rant. But I'm not going to get into it fully. But I think this... I feel like it's great that we uplift smaller designers and I wish that I could. I'm just so terrified of moving from Petit Knit because she taught me how to knit and there's still so many patterns I haven't made yet. So that's why I'm staying with her um, for now, um, but most likely forever while doing other patterns. Uh, but I see this is not about like a, a specific person who has said this. I've seen this more like in comments on people's podcasts like people I don't know who has written things like this um and it's like and I've also received comments like you only make between this stuff it's not fun and I'm I'm, so, I'm I'm sorry and it's really important to uplift small designers I, I will link to videos that I saw where they talked about underrated patterns which are great but I don't Get the hate, she, like Petit Knit, for example, is obviously as huge as she is for a reason. And she was also a small designer at some point. Should we just stop supporting her now because she's made this thing? Do you know what I mean? So with that said, I'm just like, I was in this 
feeling of watching all these videos and I felt kind of bad for making a lot of famous designs and that maybe I should uplift smaller designers and I, I should do that as well and I will as soon as I feel like I can branch out and this doesn't mean that smaller designers have harder patterns to understand it's just that I've been learning patina languages and I notice as soon as I move on to other designers I get a bit worried so I'm just trying to stay in my lane for now um, but when I was making this I was like I would stop knitting just to applaud because this icon called Mette, she's so smart. Just like, look at this. You start off here, that's a two by two, and then you see how we just, oh, it's so smart. And how the, um, if you've made slipovers before, you can usually see like a little line where you pick up, but you make this. So like you can't tell where the show it's just the details are absolutely amazing and patina it she deserves all the cred that she can get at least for me um, I do know that I was not here during the size inclusive inclusive scan scandal mm, North Carolina, that she had um, but obviously she's not there anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just, let's not, I just, we can bring up small designers and applaud them while not bringing other people down, you know? We're not a huge community. Petinet is big in our community, but you know what I mean? And as I said, this is more like sneaky comments. I've seen anonymous people write. So this is, yeah. But I will say she is just iconic and um, I'm just shocked. When I've moved on to her more difficult patterns per se, I'm just like, how do you even think of making things like this? I'm just shocked. And as soon as I start thinking of designing something myself, I lose it completely because I don't know how people do it. Whatever. Another whip that I finished, that Ingrid slip over took up all my time, all my attention. I did have a lot of wrist pain at the end, but I kept going because I just, I could not stop. I could not stop. Ugh, it's, don't do that. But then eventually I picked up this again. This was on my needles for quite a while. It is a Stockholm Sip Over V-neck by yours truly. Not that truly. Uh, petite knit. Here you can see the difference that I talk about when you pick up stitches. Like it's obviously, okay, I'm not very good at it. Stop um, judging me. But the way she did it with Ingrid Slipover is just so beautiful. With this, I used Fru Valborg um, hand dyed yarn that she had on a sale in the color Nutmeg. I did save these for you guys. I um, mean, hello. Um, and then a mohair in the color 3072. The mohair was a bit darker than the. Um, than the uh, main yarn, the squish fingering one. It is quite holy because I did have to go up to five millimeter needle to hit gauge. Um, but yeah, I think it's beautiful. I did wear this on a warm day and I could wear it. It was nice. I thought that I couldn't wear mohair for a while, but it still works. It's not very sunny outside. But this v-neck turned out way nicer than my vegan v-neck because it was the first time I did this CCD decrease, the one you make in the middle of a v-neck. Um, and when I did the Italian bind off for the weekend v-neck, you can kind of see like a stitch. I was confused because I've done the entire thing wrong. Then it, it ended up looking quite nice, but this one is perfect and it was fun. But as, if you saw my last video, you know that my slip over era is now over. I will continue to wear them this fall. I do need, I did say in the last video as well, that I should probably make myself a white slip over. I could really get use of that. Ingrid slip over doesn't count. I'm talking like <laughs> a white fingering and a white mohair type, this type of deal. And I haven't been able to stop thinking about it, so I'm probably... I, I can't buy yarn, though, so I will have to wait for that. 
but I am in the mood for it. You've seen me talk about the Stockholm Slipover before. It is a 4 out of 5 lip glitter rating. Don't let it fool you. It's the easiest slipover I've made so far. It just has a little bit of short row shaping in the shoulders, but it's nothing you can't handle. Um, I just wish someone forced me, as soon as I learned how to knit, like, teach yourself German short rows now. Because it is not difficult at all. I feel like I'm not a pro now. I still have to focus a lot when I do them. But they're just, they're so great. And they're fun. I like it. Because I do love purling a lot, so yeah. Uh, you only have a little bit here, so if you haven't learned your men's short rows, do it. I can be your emotional support. I'm not good at that, but I can try. Because I just need us all to learn it, because it's the best. So, as I said, anyway, this was on my needles for a while. I've done, like, i done to here, about here, on the body, and it was just working so slowly. You know that I use Symphony needles from Knit Pro. That has changed, though. We'll talk about that later. And usually it's fine. I've used a fingering and a mohair with my wood needles with a 5mm needle before for my sleepovers. But this time around, I just, it went by so slowly. It was not moving nicely. It was just kind of, I think one of the reasons was that I used such a big needle than what the yarn like calls for. And it has worked before, but I just think that was one of the reasons, mixed with maybe that the superwash yarn was a little rough, something like that, because it was just not working smoothly. So I did drive to a yarn store 40 minutes away. It's called Shinagon. You've seen it before. It is not the most uh, luxury um, yarn store. It is mixed with like pottery and it's very like countryside. Um, place not to bash it but it's great because they have cheaper prices and uh, it's a nice drive there as well so I did buy a five millimeter metal needle for this and as soon as I got home I could not stop knitting I made this probably the rest of the body in one night because everything worked better so I have warmed up to metal needles nowadays talk about that more later as well um yeah I Still enjoy wood needles more. I don't know. Maybe. Well, yeah. So this... I will say, I don't like the fit of it. Um, it works wearing it. Spe uh, special. Start talking Swedish. Uh, um, especially on top of a dress. But I will say, the best step over I've made so far that has fit me the best is the typical step over camera died but as I said typical step over by typical bliss is the best one the pattern is not released yet it will probably be released very soon so just keep your eyes out on that because it's just a bit wider around the shoulders and I like it so so much yeah then the last finished object is this baby literally baby knit my <laughs> Uh, my anchors um, bluse, anchors bluse, anchors troja, anchors shirt, maybe. Um, it's the anchors baby version or the junior version, I shall say. I've used, I saved one of these, in the color undercurrent from Farmer's Daughter's Fibers, a gift from Kalila and Copy Dolls. It, they're squish fingering. Literally, this is squishy. Squishy, 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 and I love it. Especially after blocking, it softens so much and it's squishy, and I love this. 100% um, superwash merino. Yeah, I do have a lot left. I got two skeins of this, and I used up. I had to go into the second hank for, I think, my second sleeve. Yeah, so I've used one. Like 100 grams is this. So I do have a lot left. Maybe I can turn them into socks or something. I don't know. I was surprised. So I started this a while back. This was a project that I picked up once in a while. I have worked with this a lot in like doctor's offices and things. And that has been super nice. Um, 
yeah, and more rewarding than making socks. I do like making socks now, but because you feel like you're making a sweater, but it goes by so quickly. The one thing I haven't, this had, I blocked this like at least a week ago, but I think two weeks ago. I finished this a while back, but it's not finished yet because I have, I have to sew on a button. Here's my little crochet buttonhole. But I just don't have energy. I'm sorry. I'm, I need to give this to my cousin's baby on the 18th. I, I will be working in the yarn store that day. Uh, so I won't be able to go to her christening and things, but it's fine because I, I don't go to church. So it's fine by me. But until the 18th of June, I need to sew on a button. Somehow I'll be able to do it. So I used 40. I did have to buy a lot of needles for this that I didn't have. 3 millimeter, 40 centimeter for the body. I could have gone with 60 centimeter, I think. It was quite small. This is a size 1 to 2 years old. I didn't do a gauge swatch. I think it's maybe a little tiny. But she's a skinny baby. So she's going to be fine. And for the... Sleeves, I did magic loop and it was so, 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 so much fun. Um, I will say, I don't get ladders, as you can see. Uh, okay, well, that kind of looks like ladders, but I promise you it's not. I don't get ladders with my magic loop. Um, but I am getting uneven stitches, but it, I don't mind because at least it's not ladders anymore. And here's the decreases that are obviously very visible. I do enjoy sleeves like this with decreases because um, I'm able to make the sleeves the exact same length because I just write them down and follow everything, so it's nice. Um, I do wish that I could fit into this because it's really soft and really comfortable, but obviously I cannot. The folded edges, I did have to you switch to a smaller needle for these. I've done folded edges before, um, like this. But I haven't switched to a smaller needle and I like that a lot because the result, it doesn't flare as much, it's quite tighter, it's really nice. But it was rolling up, so I did have to block just these sections before sewing them down because they were just rolling up all the time. But yeah, that was it. and. This is a great, it was great that I did talk about this last uh, because I will move on into my whip and I have a story behind it. So in my last video, if you saw that, we went through my yarn stash and I had bought um, a lot of skeins of Drops Merino Extra Fine to make the festival sweater by Um And I was going to make it in a dark, not dark beige, but a beige and black stripes. And then I got the yarn and I was so excited. I was gonna cast it on, it was gonna be so pretty. And I had like imagined, I needed in like a summer sweater. I mostly have sweaters with mohair, but Sweden is pretty cold and at night, sometimes you need a sweater. So I just really wanted something to have for the summer and the festival sweater, but not something that uses like a finger ring and three millimeter needles, I can't do that, sorry. Uh, so the festival sweater was perfect because it's 4 millimeter and a double sundae. So yeah, but then I got the yarn and the yarn was grey instead of beige and it just ruined all these mental images I had of what the sweater was going to look like and I was not excited anymore. I did start it, I did the neckline, the first bubble row. That was a mess. If I'm gonna make the festival sweater in the future, I will have to get myself a pair of Chagu needles for that entire sweater. You need something sharp. These um, wood needles that I have, it was just not enough. One row of those bubbles took me like an entire day because I was just not having it. Yeah. Um, so I been thinking like what sweater should I make with that in the last video we talked about the um what is it the knitting for olive it's not a sweatshirt but then then I had made that baby knit and I was just I was so sold it was so fun and I just thought that 
she is celebrating her christening and her one year birthday maybe one shirt is too little of a gift from me and she had been teasing these Ingrid baby sweaters for a while and it was released and I was like I can prob I can maybe use that gray yarn that I have for the because at that point I thought I would have to double strand a double merino extra fine so I did a swatch be right back so as soon as the pattern was released I made a swatch and here it is it looks quite tiny but I did meet gauge I was actually this was shocking I made this with one strand and I was like ooh it was like this much smaller so I started casting on another swatch with two strands of this and I was just after a couple of rows of like the double moss I was just not having it it was thick it was not nice so I just decided to block this to see how off I was with my gauge maybe this was with the four millimeter 4.5 millimeter needle and I was like maybe I can go up to five and I blocked this and I left it in the water for like an hour because I always leave my stuff while blocking for a long while and I was shocked when I removed this from the water it has like it had grown to like double the size and I was so surprised and my gauge after that was like two stitches more no like two stitches less so I was so this sweater was going to be too large and I'm used to always having to like I'm always used to having to use like a, a chunky yarn with a eight millimeter needle for like a form not really but kind of I always have to go up at least half a needle size but most likely an entire one maybe even two and thicker yarn to meet gauge I've just I have not cared to do that but I probably should so I was shocked when I my gauge was bigger surprisingly um, I know it looks pretty small on camera but it's this is the same size as my other swatch uh, for my Ingrid uh, slip over um, so then I started thinking, like, wow, and I really love the fabric. It is, I could go down with, to four then, because I did have um, a bigger gauge. Gauge confuses me. Basically, this sweater was going to be bigger. But I just, I love the fabric it made. It's like a little bit holy. <laughs> what do you say? Like, airy. Um, airy. Airy style. Um. So I just decided to go for this, but then I was thinking that, okay, so I've hit gauge and the Ingrid sweater and the Ingrid slipover had the same gauge as the junior Ingrid sweater. Um, so I was like, okay, well I have 10 skeins of the gray yarn. I could make the Ingrid sweater for myself. So this did not turn into a gift, it turned into something for me and I can't believe I actually made this. I did this because I've been, I have not allowed myself to make a 5 out of 5 project for Petit Net. I just think Jenny sweater, November jacket, brioche, I could never, I could never. But I did get a lot of hybris after the Ingrid Subover and I don't know what I was thinking. I was obviously short of yarn. I needed like, I think I have... 1,300 meters or something and you need 1,500 so I have ordered two more skeins and I'll tell you my plan but this is where we are at I just need to find the um, the back here's my <laughs> this looks like the sleeves look like Popeye before blocking it's just like <laughs> um, so yeah this needs to be blocked but this is my Ingrid sweater I have no idea when I casted this on. I noticed that the time is moving by so quickly I cannot understand it. Um, so it's probably been two weeks but it feels like a couple of days. I don't remember. But this is working by so quickly. I am using 4.5 millimeter needles 
and at first after I had done the back here and then the shoulders and you connect to the front I was like I think my gauge swatch was lying to me because this one feels pretty small but I did measure the gauge on it and it was perfect for every stitch as well um, but then I decided like here you connect to the body like here I decided to stop because I noticed that I don't have a lot of skeins of yarn left so I decided to cast on a sleeve so that I can make the sleeves identical and then see how much I have for the body because obviously the two skeins that I bought extra I haven't gotten it yet I think it's gonna arrive at the beginning of next week and I'm nervous because this yarn was supposed to be a light beige it is obviously a grayish I don't know if this is like a really strange color lot and I haven't been able to find the one that I have so hopefully they're not too different but I'm gonna tell you my plan for it I think this might this is the first sleeve that I made and holy mother of god this sweater uses a lot of short rows which was fun but if you're not comfortable with short rows, I, like I told you, I told you before, learn short rows, I'll be your emotional support. Just do it, but maybe not with a textured pattern like this. Go for something stockinette instead. Because you have short rows on the back, you have short rows on the front, and you have them on the sleeves. If you know short rows, it's not too much. It's quite fun, honestly. S especially here on the sleeves, as you can see, it is shorter down here, here. Do the 2x2 two two ribbing is, was amazing with short rows. It was just, it made so much sense. Doing short rows with double moss, I, I would say it was more um, different. I will say it's obviously similar to the Ingrid slipover, um, but just something, it's just more. It's just more stitches. I feel it's hard to explain, but it is more. The short rows have something to do with it and these sleeves have been kicking my butt. I think, I haven't restarted the entire thing but this was the first one that I made. You obviously have this section and you do, I don't know if you can tell, but you do decrease. So at first with the decreases here on the double moss I was extremely, I'm trying so hard to not reveal anything about the pattern but it's difficult. Um, since you do two decreases, the rows change for your double moss. You can't start off with an... I, I was just confused, but then I managed to fix it. I did have to unravel two times, but it's not a lot of work, so it was fine. And these. They're so fun, and I have no issues with the... I feel like I can say these things because they're in Kimmy's videos, her health videos, but I had no issues, like, borrowing the first... And last stitch, if you've read the pattern, you know what I mean. But it was something with the decreases. And I think I just had the wrong stitch count at some point. But I did have to restart this two times. Because um, as you see here, with the Ingrid slip over, you only made one row. But here they are on top of each other. And it looks super pretty. Now, if I show you the beginning of the round, it looks like this. Now I don't know if this is right at all. As you can see I I just had to wing it by myself because I feel like her video explained the decreases on the first X but not the second one and the shard was just it was com I did not understand what I was doing. So I'm just I'm gonna keep it like this because I don't mind this thing as long as all of this is correct because this is under my sleeve and honestly while I was making it I was like this is wrong but now I don't think it looks too bad right these two go into each other it's fine however then I decided to start the second sleeve because I noticed I'm starting to really run out of yarn I think this was yesterday actually that I cast it either yesterday or the day before that that I decided to cast this on and I've unraveled this section 
three times, four times, I don't know. And I posted it on my Instagram. And I need to find her name. I'll be back. Um, Ellen Le Leterme. I'm so sorry, honey, but Ellen, she, I sent her a picture because I said to her, I'm confused as well. And how my first sleeve turned out and how I couldn't get my other sleeve to work. And she was like, I think we're doing the same thing. And she sent me a picture and how she's doing. And somehow it made sense. Now, it is not looking completely correct uh, I don't think even it's similar to what I did with the first sleeve with the first X it is working well as you see here it's just like skipping the right skipping the right cross and the left cross on some rows I don't know how, as a, I, I cannot explain this but then it's here with my second one that it kind of messes up I feel like this looks way better than my first sleeve, but I will not, and I repeat, I will not unravel this just to fix this little cheeky mistake. So yeah, she's been testing me, but what I forgot to say earlier as well was that it looked pretty small, but as soon as I picked up the sleeves, it just, it's the perfect size and it will be blocked as well. And says my swatch, I'm just putting all of my trust in my swatch because it <laughs> blocked out so much. So yeah, and it's super wash, so it will stretch as well and it's going to be fine. You know I'm not a great person. That's why I was so sad when I received this yarn because I was looking for for a beige. But with this, it looks way better than in contrast with the black stripes, I feel like. And we like it. It will get a lot of use this summer, but I will, however probably make another one with as a gift for not buying yarn this summer if I can manage if I can survive I will buy like a really nice double sundae in a beige and see if I can make it nicer it's fun making two of the same pattern because it's fun to compare how it is but yeah this podcast is a long one I hope you have a good time I will, I did get a question from the on store from Anna if I could knit up an Ingrid slipover in a yarn called Cumbria that we carry at the yarn store and of course I said yes, how fun. So I will make another Ingrid uh, soon, the, another Ingrid slipover that's not for me. So I will maybe be tired of the pattern but hopefully I want to make another sweater this fall. Now, now for acquisitions i have switched up my acquisition thing when i first started podcasting i was so used to seeing i thought that i have to show everyone exactly what i bought even if it's just like an extra pair of needles but i'm not gonna do that partly because i don't i do shop a lot i do have issues <laughs> with that it gives me a lot of serotonin uh, to buy stuff especially not only yarn but like cables scissors things like that it makes me really happy so i don't want to do this overconsumption thing and show you everything that i bought but every month when i buy something like that i feel like showing you um a fun yarn or like a pretty thing i'm i'm gonna show that so one thing when i worked at the yarn store the first couple of times i saw this project bag and i thought it was so cute and then after she and her husband and Lotta had rearranged the entire store. We, not we, I didn't do anything. They did everything. Uh, rearranged the entire store thing. I saw that she still had this while I was just like setting up at the register. And here she is. I just think it's so cute. It's this little project bag that says Shetland Wool Week. I've never been there. Um, Crabea, Scotland, Scotland, and what? Shetland in Scotland? Give me a sec. I don't want to embarrass myself. Now I just got a TV show. I don't need to. Shetland place. Scotland. Cultured. Yeah. 
Uh, it's obviously very small. I feel like this can... I have used this as an ocean bag, but it's too big for an ocean bag. I'm thinking the beginning of a project. A neckline could fit in here. Socks, obviously. A baby net. Mm, it's just pretty. And I'm keeping it as an accessory. I understand why people get obsessed with project bags. The ones that I have is... We should go through that. Oh, we've got it. Uh, in the store we have these really pretty project bags i think inga talked about them in her podcast i might be wrong but i think she did um they're just so gorgeous and hopefully they sell out before <laughs> i get there because i can't do any more but yeah here's one of my project bags so uh the project bag was one acquisition the next acquisition acquisition oh, i get i'm getting too energetic sorry um is something so exciting so 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 exciting i've been wanting this ever since i saw uh how can i forget your name that is a crime camila talked about them in one of her videos or it was her instagram story i don't remember but when she bought these needles i was obsessed and camila posted her picture of her needles that she had bought this fall i think or it was the beginning of the year they were blue and i was still obsessed with blue at the time and oh my god i've been staring at those needles ever since and it's obviously the Lycke needles so i have used um th so this i i used plastic needle from denise those were my first needles we could totally do like a i really want to do a needle video uh in like two months or so because i have since i buy a lot of short interchangeable needles i have tried a lot of different brands um but yeah so these Lycke needles, I've wanted for a while. Okay, I I wanted them for a while, but things have changed in the last month. I was actually between these needles and another pair, which is the Shiagu needles. I was thinking about it, but it ended up being these, and I'd really like to get into why, but this podcast is already really long, so I'd love to do a needle video if you guys want that. But my symphony needles are great. I, the sizes have totally been scraped off with knitting a lot. But I love the needles in, it, in itself. They're really nice. However, the cables. I have to screw, screw on my needles multiple times. It feels like I'm, I'm doing the most. I am tightening it with my entire soul. Still... <laughs> And when I've tried other Knit Pro needles, like the Nova Metal ones, those hold on to the cables even a shorter amount of time than the Symphony ones. And it was just getting frustrating. And I thought, you know what? I knit so much. It's all that I do. I cannot have this anymore. It is too much of a hassle. It is annoying me. And it kind of makes me not want to knit. So... I was looking at these needles and the reason why I wanted to kind of do the shy glue ones is because, okay, we're getting into it anyway. Uh, the cables are mwah, like butter. Amazing. I have tried the bamboo needles, ba bamboo needles from shy glue. I don't like those, but they're metal ones. Their cables is gorgeous. I've used the shy glue ones for magic loop a couple of times now and the needle is the same. It's not changed at all. It is gorgeous. However, they are metal and I have an extreme problem with sounds. Ooh, it makes me... I have noise cancelling headphones on all day and it is just icky for me to use metal needles like that. I It's gotten better for me, but yeah. So that's what, so it was an issue because I, the bad things that I've heard about Lycke needles are their cables, um, that people are not a fan of them, but I've also heard that you can use the Knit Pro cables together with the Lycke and that was also a nice thing because then I have all these cables that I've acquired from Knit Pro and I can still use them with my Lycke needles. So it ended up being these and I bought the umber color because I'm in a brown. Thing. I'm not a great person, so the driftwood was not it, and the blue ones, I'm, mm, 
it ended up being these. I would love if they had like a dark brown case. One of the reasons was also because Lycke has the most gorgeous cases. Shagu, I don't like the case. I don't think it's pretty and I am very much like an aesthetic person. Uh, I love things to be pretty. I'd rather have things be pretty than, um, or, um, what's it called? Pretty than, uh, helpful than, uh, whatever. Here they are. I have picked out one pair that I'm using for my ingredients for at the moment. They are absolutely gorgeous. I do have a video that I can put in here of when I got them in the mail because I was so excited. I am extremely <laughs> unprepared to be filming this right now, but I am absolutely so excited. I should not show my address. So, I thought that this package would take weeks to arrive, at least an entire week, maybe two weeks. But it has been less than a week. And here it is and I just went to the mailbox to just check things maybe the paper and this is in there and I am abs I am so excited I don't know what to do I should have brought a scissor I did not do that I'm using a pen so yeah hello Alexandra stay safe so beautiful okay let's do it I can't believe this is actually happening. And I'm starting multiple whips today. Not mo multiple, but I'm starting whips today. So it's gonna be amazing using new needles with it. I can tell you that I bought the brown one because I was originally last year looking at the blue needles, but there's just something, I love brown way more. So let's open it together. You guys can be the first ones to see. I'm just in love with this case. It is gorgeous. I saw it before you, I'm sorry. That is... I could cry. But yeah, I have not used these a lot yet. I will say I they are lighter so far than my Knit Pro Needles, I've noticed, uh, I'm not like, oh my god, these are the best needles I've ever used, it's such a huge difference, not yet, I haven't noticed that. I will say one of my cables have already, not, they're not, it's not broken, but it's kind of like loose. And I have already had to put them into hot water twice. So they're pretty much the same as the Knit Pro Needles, but it's, I'll see. Mm. but I do like them I like them they're pretty <laughs> that's the most important thing I guess and then this video is gonna be really long but it's fine I do have one more thing to show you so functional was the word I was looking for before I am very much I would like things to be pretty instead of functional and I have been wanting to have this folder for my patterns I have always been printing out my patterns in booklets and I just wanted a pretty place to store them so I've been looking for a file. Teen Knit, she has an A5 you know how a page is a size A4 off the top but booklets are a size A5 it was impossible to find a pretty folder in that size until I found one on Amazon Hell yes! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to buy things on Amazon. It's not logical. I'm in Sweden. I don't feel like it's very efficient or anything. And different pays off, you know? But I did end up buying it there. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you. Here it is. Brown leather. And then I also had to find these plastic files um, to keep my patterns in. That was also impossible. I ended up having to buy them off of a website that, like offices like office depot so like i couldn't buy like 50 i had to buy a hundred and then my the printer that we have at home is like 
it's old so it made these are I do have patterns in here so these are patterns that I've printed out and that I've used so they have um, inside of here they have a lot of notes in a bad way I've like run over the text so I can't read it so the plan was to print them out all again I've also made holes and put yarn I don't want that I just want them to be um, completely readable and pretty and not have these holes so for that since our printer was broken as well because here you can see you kind of Okay, you can see, but I, when you printed it out, it got all these yellow colors on top. So we ended up buying a new printer, and I was on the lookout. I was the one who was assigned to find a good printer. And I did find a good printer. However, I was so excited. I had all of my plastic files, I had this thing, and I had some wrist pain, so I was going to spend the entire day organizing my patterns, maybe make a video about it. And then we connected the printer, everything was great, until I realized I had found a printer who can print double-sided. So I couldn't print any booklets. And I cried. I, I, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not a person who cries. I cry over, like, other people crying and, like, sad TikToks, but I don't cry because I'm sad. I just go into like a, a sama bildet. I become sama bildet, okay? And, uh, but I did cry. That was frustrating. And I felt like the entire world was against me. <sighs> so then I was gonna go into my dad's work because he has this great office printer and we were gonna print it out. But I just, I scratched that because the new printer is like really good and prints out really nice pictures. So I ended up printing out all of my patterns on an A4 side. And my house is specifically very environmental friendly we do a lot of things for the environment i spend all my time um sorting what's it called in english uh paper paper blah, 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 blah. go to the place five minutes away and organize all the different trashes so for me i think it's fine that i print out my patterns on paper i do have them on my google drive as well but i just want them because it's pretty and it's like a collection so i did print them out on a4 pages instead and since I couldn't print it out double-sided, the patterns became quite large. <sighs> but I, yesterday, I did this yesterday, I ended up buying these wooden things to keep my, it is heavy. This is my petite knit folder. Maybe I'll like do something pretty with these, but for now I'm keeping it like this. And now here I have all of my patterns. I was thinking, I started buying her patterns off of Ravelry so I could download them both on English and Swedish. So I was thinking of putting my Swedish patterns in here as well, but no, uh, it's too heavy. So I do have all of, it is so aesthetically piecing, piecing. And some of her patterns has this in the back, like a picture in the back. And some patterns didn't, and it was not nice enough for me, so I did spend like two hours. You can tell that it's me who has done it. But looking through her pictures and choosing the prettiest one to put in the back and print out as well. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy about this. It is standing very pretty on my shelf. And then, I don't know, it, it's like, this is another folder uh, with random patterns. We should go through them maybe. Mm -hmm. This is Tickle Bliss. Or I know it's like bad because it's plastic. Typical tank. Then we have the souffle. Um, this knitting for olive uh, Nordic summer dress. My favorite thing's knitwear. If Petit Knit continues making patterns, um, I will probably, these two will have to be cup of holders, but for now, this is how it is. So yeah, this was uh, basically, maybe not that interesting to hear about, but for me, I was so excited about this. And now, I don't know what to make with this. It's just so pretty. It has these folders as well. So I've, for now, I've put in all of my like peanut postcards into here because they just fit perfectly. And I thought it fit the team with my peanut folder. 
and I just have these like just to not make it look empty but I'm thinking I do have my knitting journal um, that I, I'm going to show you at the end of the year we're going to do like a flip through because I've written down all the projects that I made this year and uh, I did buy two of them because for a while she had two notebooks for the price of one but it is breaking at the seams because um, it's just filled with yarn and pictures so I'm thinking maybe for next year this will be my like 2023 20, knit journal and I can make these pretty pages and then put them into folders like this or something because it's just so pretty but I'm so sad that this didn't work out welcome to the editing room that's me I just realized I forgot to show you guys my yarn <clears throat> rookie mistake I had a lot of things to think about, so I'm just gonna put this in here, showing you guys the yarn that I bought. Here it is. I did share a picture of this on Instagram. I promise they're not the same color, but I am getting confused looking at them. So 42 hours after I posted my video about not buying more yarn, Fru Vanboy, a Swedish indie designer, said that she's putting all of her and like a, a lot of things on sale on her website because she want to like rebrand and things so I did set the alarm for eight o'clock and things happened <sighs> I'm sorry and they're all the, basically the same color but they're different um, bases and I do have plans for them so these are merino just normal merino it's her merino swirl 80% merino and 20% nylon obviously sock yarns but I will make I'm thinking obviously some type of summer top it's 200 grams so either not a slip over no 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 it's over um a camisole number two or number five one of those in this beautiful it's in the color limpet beautiful blue pink but not too much also has some like gold it's gorgeous and then we have these and you can tell such a difference this has i i'm i'm gonna be honest just looking at them i need to look at the label because i can't really tell the difference from the colors here we have it's three in the color mud this is coming off way more beige than it is in real life it's way more pink in real life you can see those in my pictures on Instagram. In the color mud, it's 70% merino instead of 80% and it's 30% silk. And you can tell such a difference. It's just smoother and lighter. I can already tell this is gonna not be as warm. Gorgeous. This is gonna become either a Sunday tea or something else. So I don't have a lot of plans. I'm kind of lying to you. Um, Sorry. And then the last one that does have a plan. This is going to turn into a, not a camisole, um, cumulus tea. The silk version that she uses pure silk for, that one. In this color, sandstone. It is gorgeous. It is beige. It has some brown in there. I'm obsessed with this base. It is so soft and I cannot wait to feel it on me. 70% mm. Merino, as we said, and 30% silk. Gorgeous. Cumulus tea. Um, something. And something. So this is what we bought. Not the same color, I promise. They're different. They're different. You can see that, right? Okay, back to the video. Kiss kiss love love. I will say, with the yarn store, um, thank you all for your kind wishes. That was so nice in my last video. Um, it's all thanks to you guys for manifesting it for me. Um, but thank you for all your nice comments. It's strange. I've lived here my entire life for 21 years. And it's just, if you go on a walk, you see your neighbor. You see these old teachers. But when working at the yarn store, I've encountered, I think, five British people. It's strange. I did meet this one lady who was there with her Swedish mom, but she was from... The UK, and it was so hard for me, you know, not to just do this. I haven't met a British person in real life. I did meet a couple of men, 
uh, when I was out a couple of years ago and they tried to steal my umbrella. It was strange. Um, but I had so much fun. But I have noticed that while I'm getting more comfortable with my English on camera, in real life, it's not really that good. So if you meet me and your English, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's gonna turn into this and I'm gonna lose all my English because it's when I'm just here, it doesn't matter if I fuck up. But if when I talk to an English person in real life, it's difficult because you guys just talk so quickly. I can't keep, I can't keep up. But yeah, it's been fun meeting all these British people. I did have a woman from California come in as well. I'm, I'm just surprised because I've lived in this hole with the same people around me all my life, and now suddenly I meet all these British people here. It's strange. I just thought I'd say that. But yeah. Uh, so thank you for all your night. I did get a comment in the last video. That's why I'm saying this that um, my English was nice and keep it coming It makes me happy. I've been so insecure about my English for this entire time So it just makes me happy and I'm happy that I'm more comfortable. I'm happy that you guys keep watching It's strange, but you do and like thank you and um, Yeah, I hope you have an amazing time. It's gonna be June <sighs> I should cast on some summer whips, but I am having some difficulties. I did ask a question because I have three skeins of pure silk um, on my Instagram yesterday and I'll share what people wrote because I don't really know what to make with it. I have obviously some patterns in mind, but I'm not really excited about them. But here are some tips for what I should make. So here's some summer knits recommendations for you. And let me know if you've, you've obviously been knitting while watching this. I think. Tell me what you've been knitting on. That would be fun. And kiss kiss, love love, peace and love. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye!